Of all the games I used to play in my younger wilder days, the game of clubs and tees it never crossed my mind. But after some discussion with my closest, dearest friends, I welcome decided- into another episode of the Turn Fantasy Golf Podcast. My name is Andrew Putters here with my partner, in Crime from Rotoballer.com, lead golf editor. Joe sweet swinging nicely did not hit the sticks this weekend looked like he was poolside with the fam for father's day man what a weekend of golf we watched probably mean you need to hash out a few things number one let's just hit right the u.s open right now joe yeah man i commented commented on a tweet that you put out there (laughs) forgettable tory pines yeah first first give me your opinion yeah Uh I don't know, man. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm a little too tough on Port Tory Pines. Just every hole seems the same, man. Outside of like three and eighteen, every hole seemed the same. Um, when you're watching on TV, I know it's beautiful. I know you've been there, and I know you loved it. And it's probably one of those things when you experience it in person, it's great. But um, just just from kind of memorable holes on TV, uh, there's only a couple for me. So that that's kind of my only thing with Tory Pines. I think it's fine. Um, obviously we've had, had two U S opens there and they've, <clears throat> they've both, uh, been very dramatic ones. Uh, so, you know, it's, it, it proves to be a good venue, uh, as far as providing exciting golf, but I just don't know that it's the most memorable, uh, U S open venue we have, but it's fine, man. Uh, like Tory, um, but just a really weird week, man. The broadcast just felt kind of not major lock, if that makes any sense. Uh, just, just seemed kind of. Kind of like a normal PGA Tour event. Maybe it's from where it's there uh, for the farmers. Not sure, Andrew, but just kind of a weird week, man. Uh, weird stuff going on with lineups. Uh, really missed on the uh, core four. I had had Xander Hovland, Finau, and and Charlie Hoffman uh, as my DraftKings core four over on Roto Baller. Of course, Vic had the WD. Uh, Finau played horrible, um, so didn't have much going from a DFS perspective, but. I put a bunch of lineups in on FanDuel, and there I am. I, I sent you a text Saturday night. I had two lineups in the top 30 uh, in the FanDuel, FanDuel Mega Eagle. So uh, go into Sunday with a with a chance. Had had no ROM, uh, so so got on FanDuel Sportsbook uh, yesterday morning, Sunday morning, and and live bet ROM just to kind of hedge, which turned out being great because uh, my lineups went in the tank, but just overall, man, a really, really weird U S open kind of mixed results all around and just felt kind of weird. Well, I've got a couple of things to say then on that note, uh, number one, first about the, um, the broadcasting, um, you know, up until recent years, U S open was the most televised golf event by far. We used to get 7 AM to 7 PM live coverage, either on ESPN or TBS USA, whatever, <laughs> whatever the coverage was on, it was on for 12 hours every day. And um, I guess PJ Tour allowing the corporate stuff to push them around is happening now with – it now looks like their majors is we have to go to four different stations or, or three to four different um, viewerships to, to catch it, whether it be the app, the Peacock Network, the Golf Channel, NBC. It really – is about about hard impossible to follow really um but the very disappointing as far as that goes uh from the fan base um as far as tory goes let me say this in person it's amazing i'm sure that the golf course is amazing shape uh but honestly this week it played other than the rough being a little higher uh, it played like the the event did in february unfortunately i think because uh really tory has a lot more teeth uh, there's no reason whatsoever, in my opinion, that uh, in a U.S. Open, a guy from 265 yards out should hit a three-wood onto a par five, and it sits. I mean, can we be honest about that? That should not be a factor. The greens were too soft, in my opinion. They did shoot shorten the par down to par 71. Uh, the winner shot uh, six under. Uh, so um, at a normal Tory event, if you – um add three more that puts him at nine and then he plays the north course one day instead of the south which averages about two shots he shoots 11 under par uh, in a normal tour event there so honestly it played the same setup as the um as the normal event in february which is very disappointing for me because i how much i love tory and i 
if if they firmed up those greens, Joe, four over would have won this tournament. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you, man, and I think the players kind of said as much. And maybe the maybe the USGA didn't want them to say some of the things they said. I think it's Mackenzie Hughes after uh, Saturday's round when he got in contention. I mean, he basically uh, they kind of asked him the difference between uh, this week and the farmers, and he said basically nothing. <laughs> and Rom even came out and said that he was firing at pins all day yesterday. So, yeah, man, I, I was kind of disappointed with that. Um, you know, I expected it to be a little bit beefier and tougher than it was. But, yeah, I, I agree with you. Very, very similar to the farmers. Um, and, and circling back around to the to the broadcast, Andrew, how bad has Johnny Miller missed, man? Maybe that's one of the things uh, uh, with, it, with NBC's coverage of the U.S. Open. Uh, you, you just didn't really appreciate maybe how just how good Johnny Miller was till he's gone now. Um, but Azinger's just terrible, man, and, and he seems like a great guy, and I'm sure really knows the game inside out. But uh, as far as being a major championship caliber uh, broadcaster, uh, he's pretty painful to listen to uh, when you're when you're watching him all weekend. From a broadcast standpoint, Joe, uh, they probably said the same thing when they handed off from Ken Venturi over to Johnny Miller. Maybe, maybe a few years down the road, you know, or maybe when Azinger hangs it up, eventually they'll be saying the same thing, you know, about you know, the, the guy covering him or, excuse me, replacing him doesn't hold a candle either. So I think it might be a little early on the Zinger, but I, I can understand what you're saying. But let's, you know, when he was in that chair, Johnny Miller was not very well liked either. Some of the comments he made about his game versus some of the guys on tour today. So I don't know. Uh, I guess – not watching a ton of it. I just kind of watched – I watched it all day Sunday, but uh, not watching a ton of it throughout other than just catching clips here and there. Um, you know, like I said, hi highly disappointed in the playing condition of the course. Um, we all like to see uh, – I mean, personally, I mean, it, it been – I think it's fun when they're – it's fun for the viewer when you see the U.S. Open Champion shoot three, four, five over and uh, – and like like you said, John Rom firing at every pin on Sunday. I mean, what hole is it? Um, is it eleven or twelve? Is a par three? You know, and it's like it's like two eleven or two two o three or whatever. And it's a back right pin behind the behind the bunker, and they're firing right at it with five irons. I mean, yeah. that's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. In a U.S. Open, U.S. Open. Let me let me let me preface that. You know, uh, I still think even under normal conditions. Tory Pines stands right up there with uh, Quail Hollow, Riviera as the three, probably the and maybe maybe a uh, maybe Bay Hill, and unfortunately, you know what was the what was the tournament up in the Canadian Open they've had the past decade that Jack Nicklaus designed? Um, uh, yeah, they Glenn had Abbey. that. Uh, Glenn Abbey. <clears throat> Glenn Abbey. Yeah, yeah, Glenn Abbey. Other other than that, I mean, those five courses probably to me were the cat's meow as far as regular tour events on the big courses, the major championship like this courses, and. Um, and unfortunately, uh, like I said, just disappointing that 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 I think they did an injustice to the to the USGA. Now on the way out, Mike Davis with the failed flyover could not have ended on a better note for me. To me, he is the guy that ushered in the cut down every tree in America on a golf course trend, and I am happy to see the guy go. Might be a good guy, probably a great organizer, or whatever. USGA has done a lot of things good for the game over the last twenty whatever years he's been in there, but I mean. I think that that I'm I'm happy to see the guy go, um, and uh, hopefully the new guy uh, does better. But anyway, yeah, he's he's a really sharp guy. Uh, Mike Wan's coming in from uh, he was actually the LPGA commissioner, and he he's a really really sharp guy, really highly thought of. I think he's got some past history with the USGA, so I think he'll do a really good job. Um, but yeah, definitely time for a change there, man. Agree with you on on Mike Davis. Funny story, funny story. Uh, so, you know, my dad's a member of the Virginian Country Club up in Bristol, Tennessee, Virginia, state line. And, uh, and, and you knew that. But uh, we were up there uh, touring the place, and the place is built in the 90s, you know. And when they built it, they brought in this firm, and they checked out the golf course. And the first thing the, the firm in the mid-90s said, you know, first thing we need you to do over the next 20 years, you need, you need to plant 2,500 trees. Brought the same firm in three years ago, and, they, and the same exact firm, Joe, 20, 25 years later said, over the next 10 years, you need to cut down 1,500 trees. <laughs> 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 I 
Okay. And That's they, crazy, they, Joe. And they sent him a bill both times. Is yeah. the beautiful thing about that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, uh, that's just, a, I'm just, I'm not a fan of the tree, the clearing the trees out on the old courses that you, you know, that I've mentioned it several times, especially on the Donald Ross tracks, uh, cause that's what kind of gave them teeth here in their older years, uh, since they're a lot shorter, you know, for the most part. But anyway, moving on from the U S open Joe, uh, lastly said John Rahm, man, uh, I said last week, I couldn't find it in my heart to pick him and it had nothing to do with his golf game. I even made that clear, uh, you know nagels threw out a bunch of stuff out there you know i just i'm not i'm just not a fan of him but man he's a player he's very good at golf i can say that um yeah yeah i i agree man and and thoughts and prayers out to bagels our guest last week he he might never do the show again because, because we're the the curse of the turn uh brought brought home a rom victory when he was out there in california but uh if you're listening bagels we appreciate you doing the show and hope you'll do it again and hope you had a great week man seeing family i know it didn't didn't go the way he wanted it to go but uh yeah andrew as you mentioned john Rahm, man just a phenomenal player uh has really been a phenomenal player since he stepped foot on the pga tour um seems like i used to roster him a lot more than i do now obviously as his price is much higher than it than it was when he kind of first came on the tour. But I absolutely loved playing that guy when it, when he was a rookie, first couple of years on tour, and he's consistently produced uh, ever since turning professional. Uh, this kind of felt inevitable. Um, kind of felt like a major was coming at some point. We just didn't know when, and most likely it's the first of many, man. Uh, for just a really talented guy that's that's up there, tee to green, uh, around the green putting. Um, just, just, just ties it all, man. One of the, one of the best, uh, all around players in the game, uh, without question has the power needed to compete in today's game. Uh, was also a very good iron player and can scramble well and, and make putts, especially on POA as we saw last week. So, uh, congrats to John Rom. uh, some tough, tough ejections there, uh, down the back. Those guys kind of got tight coming down the stretch, Bryce and the Shambo, Look to be completely in control of the tournament. We'll talk about him a little bit this week, but look to be completely in control of the tournament and just absolutely ejected coming down the stretch. Uh, Colin Morikawa made a double on a par five. Rory couldn't get it done again. So um, hats off to Rom for hanging in there, uh, kind of outlasting those guys and making a couple clutch putts when he needed to. Yeah, man, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, we need to move on to the travelers, but uh, yeah, I'm a little surprised at the decision to lay up on 18 for Moose Tazen. Um, you know, what laid up to, you know, I mean, he had a great shot. And, and, and at the end of the day, you know, he still had a chance to make a couple of 10 footers on the way in to get to that playoff. And um, a little surprised in the situation. Uh, you know, maybe he didn't know where third place was. I don't know. I was almost more surprised by his by his tee shot on 17, man, pulling it left uh, off the canyon. Uh, really surprised by that. Um, I think on 18, he's probably trying to make something happen there. Uh, he had a great drive, and and he might have felt like he had a better chance of holding out a wedge, uh, you know, rather than trying to get it out of that lie in the rough. But, yeah, man, just uh, Louie continues. We talked about it uh, last week on the show that, that it's almost uh, – He's almost becoming an auto play in major championships, and sure enough, there he was again. Um, but once again, couldn't get couldn't get the victory, couldn't close it out. But um, just a classy player, man. Anytime you're on these tough old school type venues um, where ball striking's at a premium, man, you you have to consider Louis, especially in the form he's in now. But yeah, kind of surprised uh, really by that pull off the tee on 17, and then. Uh, just just putting a tough position on 18. Yeah, and you know, he's talked to his caddy there back and forth. He's thinking about hitting the seven wood. You know, he's 245 out. He said he could fly the seven wood about 190 with some top spin. And I don't know. I um, mean, he was he was one ahead of third. So worst case scenario, he's probably finishing tied for second if he hits in the water there instead of second alone. Um, I land up obviously he locks second up, <laughs> but I mean. Uh, Wonder if that goes back to you know he's played major championships strong now for the last four or five years. Wonder if that goes to maybe just I'm not going to say his mentality, but his uh, his ability to uh, take a lot of things out of it 
you know, and ba- basically try to play mistake less. Maybe that's the mindset, and maybe that's why he's had so much success and you seem top five, top ten, top fifteen, top twelve. You know, week after week yeah. after week in the in the majors. Yeah, that probably speaks a lot to why we see him pop up in these major championships, Andrew, consistently. Uh, and, and it seems like the tougher the venue, um, the better he plays. And it might also be why he doesn't have a win on the PGA Tour. Um, where routinely week in, week out, we see birdie fest uh, type tournaments where you almost have to be aggressive and fire at pins. And uh, since we're on the subject, we could maybe even say the same thing for Brooks Kepka. A guy that for all kind of his toughness and brashness um, and kind of the way he carries himself actually plays the game very conservatively, hits the ball very long off the tee, which Louis is a pretty long hitter as well, um, but just hits greens. Uh, two putts, makes his par, and goes on. That's that's why Brooks has had so much success in the U.S. Open, why Louis had so much success in major championships. And maybe it's why they don't have as many regular PGA Tour wins because they do play that style of golf. Yeah, I, I, I've never actually thought that, but that makes a lot of sense. And and also with Brooks, too, he's, he's rock solid mentally. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're right. The, the hitting the fairways, the greens, and the two puttings is the way to go. So, Joe, we, we've harped on this long enough. Let's talk about rotoballer.com. We got a deal for us for the rest of the year. Yeah, man. You can hop in right now uh, for $69.99. You can use promo code NICE, N I C E, when you sign up over at rotoballer.com. Uh, you can get my DraftKings Core 4 every week. Josh Bennett does a course breakdown. Uh, Spencer Aguiar has his uh, awesome rankings wizard over there and does a Vegas report, which is extremely helpful if you're making bets. And we also brought Andy Lack onto the team uh, recently. So we hope you'll go to rotoballer.com and check out all of our PGA content. Rotoballer.com, best place in the world for your daily fantasy needs. So <clears throat> Travelers Championship, this is the uh, see, it was, this is the 69th playing of the Travelers uh tpc High, river highlands of in cromwell connecticut uh par 70 64 41 uh bent grass poana pretty much throughout but it's got bluegrass and fescue rough pretty decent actually pretty decent rough on this golf course for a normal pga event uh averaging about three and a half inches cut line in the rough and i'm not sure they'll cut it after wednesday so could grow up to about four inches by the weekend um and uh yeah it's pretty 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 thick rough for a normal PGA event. Designed in 82 by Pete Dye, renovated in 89 by Bobby Weed. Um, I did uh, see, it actually said there's an additional note about the course that the turf looked, it took a little bit more this year to wake up. So we might see some bare spots uh, or thinner spots in the rough, uh, thinner spots on some of the edges of the greens, things like that. So um, <clears throat> this is a great golf course. Um, very well highly thought of like most Pete die tracks mm-hmm. we got to be in the fairway to set up our second shot you're going to see a lot of three woods a lot of uh stinger irons off from guys you're going to see a lot of 280s off the tee that's let's just put it that way guys that hit it over 280 are going to be hitting a lot of three woods uh, and usually has a pretty good field in this tournament this tournament has um historically has had all kinds of different kinds of winners uh <clears throat> Going back as far as you look back in the day and you see Phil Mickelson's won here a few times. Jordan Spieth has won here a few, uh, won here. Russell Knox, Chez Reavy, Dustin Johnson, Bubba Watson. I mean, even Kenny Duke back in 2013. Strillman, Leishman. <clears throat> you know, uh, Stuart Sinks won a couple of times. Brad Faxon back in the day. So good putter uh, or uh, good putter, good iron player, long hitter. That really doesn't play a favorite. <clears throat> other than the only thing we do know is the score is probably going to be somewhere between 13 under and 20 under Joe. Uh, we can get pretty much knock that in. So basically the guy starts making dropping birds um, is going to uh, take home the victory. I already named uh, all the former winners that are in the field this week. Excuse me. <clears throat> all the former winners in the field this week. Uh, but like I said, there's a, uh, uh, several several players, it seems like if they play good on Pete Dye courses, they always play good here. Um, and uh, the only outlier there really is Bubba Watson. We can't figure out why he's won here three times, Joe. Uh, uh, 
You got anything there's else you want to say about the tournament uh, or the golf course? There's a, there's a lot we can't figure out about Bubba, man. <laughs> that driver off deck he hit last last week was pretty sick, though. Yeah, um, yeah, man. You, you mentioned the uh, Pete Dye. First thing comes to mind is uh, Second Shot Golf Course, a uh, little little Harbor Town, little Hilton Head Harbor Town thrown in there. Some TPC Sawgrass. Uh, you know, we see a ton of Pete Dye throughout the schedule over the course of a year, Andrew. So we can kind of pinpoint some of these guys that play well on die tracks. Um, just over 6,800 yards. Uh, one, of, one of the shorter tracks we see uh, on the schedule. So as you mentioned, a lot of less than driver holes. Um, so so I'm, I'm basically focusing on strokes gained approach, looking at very good iron players, looking at proximity from 125 to 150, 150 to 175 in that bucket. Um, and, and need a guy to just get hot with the putter. Um, but you know, we always say strokes hand approach is important, but I certainly think that's, that's definitely the case. Anytime we're talking about a Pete dog golf course. And, uh, that's what I'll be focusing on, uh, most heavily this week. Um, only two par fives. Uh, so I'm not going to, I mean, these guys need to take advantage of them, but it's tough to, you know, give a ton of weight to par five scoring when there's only two out there. Um, uh, but as you mentioned, man, yeah, definitely want to focus on guys that can make tons of birdies. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Joe, um, you know, top was right here at the top of the price point. You got DJ, um, DeChambeau, Kepka, And, uh, one thing I want to throw out real quick about, uh, right out of the gate is that <clears throat> DJ won last year. Uh, Kepka didn't play last year. That's whenever he was coming back, you know, he had some knee issues already and Bryson finished T six. Um, DJ won last year, and I don't know if you remember this, but this is when we started talking about DJ getting tuned up. We could see it coming. We could see it coming. We could see it coming. And during this stretch last year, DeChambeau, like, finished top eight, like, every tournament because he was making literally everybody looked at, Joe. And so uh, we have to take those things into factor before we start looking at this price point. That's just why I want to mention right off the top. But 10K and above, DJ, DeChambeau, Kepka, Cantlay, Reed. This might be mm. a – a full pass uh, on those. I know I've every week it seems like I'm saying a full pass on the first four or five guys, but um, you said DeChambo was in full control uh, last week. We're going to we're going to get a good hard look and see how mentally tough he is after that total meltdown on the back nine. Will he be able to continue that um, that putting he had last year? DJ, I'm I'm not really sure about DJ. It was very lackluster. I mean, it felt like he played awful this week, and he still finished what 13th or something seventh I don't, he still finished pretty good up there uh never really made any noise never really hit the top page of the leaderboard but um i just really quickly joe first name that really pops up on my beamer is at 9900 paul casey yeah yeah me me too is me too andrew uh paul casey's a guy i'm gonna be starting a lot of lineups with this week um he was my horse in this week's horse for the course article um, had a little stretch here between 2017 and 2019 where he went T5, T2, T5. Um, has played extremely well on this golf course, and uh, his ball striking numbers, man, are off the charts. He's been insane good this year. Has gained strokes on approach in every single start he's made in America this year. Uh, won on the Euro Tour back at the start of the year, um, and has played extremely well as of late, man. Ranks first in this field in strokes gained T to green second in strokes gained approach over the last 24 rounds um so you know there's a pretty strong argument that if you if you do want to kind of dodge those top guys all of whom have question marks i believe uh and, and start your lineups off with paul casey i'm i'm certainly with you on that man um just great course history and great form um if you do want to bump up to the top uh as you mentioned this is where dj got things going last year we we'd seen some lackluster play from him if you remember uh shot a couple of 80s at the memorial uh, i think had a wd in minnesota leading up to this and and just all of a sudden man it i think it was on friday i can't remember if it's friday or saturday in this tournament last year andrew but i would have bet every dollar in my pocket dj was gonna shoot 59 that round i think he ended up shooting 61 um so that that's just how fast he can turn it on man has looked lackluster as you mentioned um but but has been rounding into form a little bit um gained strokes on approach in each of his last two last week at the u.s open and two weeks ago at palmetto um so there are some things trending in the right direction for dj even though you know it, it's hit or miss when you're paying this type of price tag 
Um, Bryson, the question for me is how mentally tough is he? Um, is he going to be able to bounce back from that uh, epic disaster down, down the stretch, man? I mean, he had his had his hands on his second straight U.S. Open trophy, basically, and just imploded. Um, so can he get over that quickly and, and bounce back here where he has played extremely well, um, has three top tens in his last three starts on this golf course, and we saw him play well at the players. Um, we've seen him play well at Harbor Town in the past. So, I'm, you know, despite it doesn't it doesn't seem like a great fit, um, but DeChambeau seems a lot paid die golf courses. So, you know, it's more of a question of if he can bounce back from last week for me there. Um, Brooks, man, who knows? If it's not a major, I'm pretty much passing on Brooks, to be honest. Um, Patrick Cantlay, you want to talk about a guy who kind of ghosted a, a really strong finish last week? I didn't see the guy hit a shot uh, all week at the U.S. Open. I, th- I thought he missed the cut. He had a T-15, Andrew, at Torrey. I- I've never seen him hit a shot. He's had three straight top 15s in this tournament. Um, so I think you can look at Patrick Cantley there if you want to kind of fade the tip top, uh, but maybe bump up from pa- Paul Casey. Cantley's an option. Reed's always solid, but we never know where to put him statistically. So uh, a lot of questions up at the top. Uh, I don't mind at all dropping down and starting with Paul Casey. I think that'll be a popular thing to do for folks. Um, but but it's tough to argue with the form and it's tough to argue with his course history. Yeah, um, I, I was, you know, as soon as I said his name, though, I started thinking about, I feel like a lot of people are going to have that same mindset is all the question marks in the first five, slide on down, see the recent history from Paul Casey at this track, plus how well he's really played over the last six, eight events. <clears throat> and um, might be there, so he may, we could be looking at another 30% ownership possibly maybe not with uh Scheffler, reed strillman right around the same price we might be able to it might bring his ownership down uh what are they what are they saying on the on the uh they on the estimation on him do you know uh, i haven't seen anything yet man we you know it's always early in the week when we do this but I, i'm sure he's gonna be popular yeah. um I, I would almost bet he i almost bet he'd be one of the uh, most highly owned guys on the slate this week um yeah because he does have that sub 10k price tag the great course history the great form just a lot to lot man from paul casey and as you mentioned uh scheffler's a strong player has looked good his last couple times out played well last week uh missed the cut in his only traveler start here last year kevin streelman uh, another course horse really in that paul casey mold and it's kind of a theme for me andrew as uh, this week as we go down the salary scale i'm I'm happy to go kind of boring this week um, with a Paul Casey, with a Kevin Streelman. Um, just consistent veterans, guys that know how to play this golf course, kind of know how to handle the rigors of coming off a major championship last week. Um, Streelman's got a runner up here, a T15 and a T8 um, over his last four traveler starts, and he's played really, really well um, this year. So, you know, he's kind of a kind of a poor man's Paul Casey in this spot, a little bit cheaper. Um, probably won't carry quite the ownership, um, uh, especially at this pretty stout $9,400 price tag, but really like Kevin Strillman up there. You can even pair him with Paul Casey this week. Um, as you move on down, Matty Wolf is really, really good to see him back last week, man. Um, lo- love his personality. Uh, love that he's willing to kind of step away and try to get himself right. And, and we were reminded just how exciting he can be uh, when he's out there playing golf and having fun. Uh, had a couple of just crazy rounds, just unbelievably fun to watch. So good to see him back. But I don't know that this golf course is the greatest fit for him, uh, being a less than driver track. Um, Tony's not played well here his last couple times out, missed the cut in his last two traveler starts, but did have a couple of top 25s prior to that here. Um, but I, I, I'm still really kind of scratching my head over his performance last week, Andrew. So. Um, I would almost want to drop down to an answer or a Neiman guys that we talk about a lot on this podcast. Both guys have played well in this tournament. The course fits there. Great ball strikers. Uh, answers case very, very accurate off the tee. Um, very precise with their iron. So I, I, I feel uh, answer and Neiman are both great plays this week. Uh, talk to me a little bit about this range, man. Even on down to Bubba, your boy Bubba at 89. Yeah, I think I'm on full fade on Bubba mode uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I think Neiman's interesting because uh, he has put it a lot better uh, the last six months. Um, but I'm not sure that the course obviously fits his 
style of play. Uh, you know, he, one of his advantages is how far he hits it, obviously. Um, so I'm not, but he does hit his, he does hit a lot of fairways and the fair, you know, to, to set up your second shot, you've got to be in the right spot in the fairway. So I do like him. I, I like answer a little bit better. I think, um, uh, this, this guy, of course, fits right into his style of play, position golf, a lot of fairways, a lot of greens. Like Brian Harmon also, uh, 8,800. Um, love, love Brian Harmon this week. Yeah, like, like him. Uh, moving on down, I mean, Charlie Hoppin, um, kind, kind of back-to-back uh, Memorial and and this week, disappointing weekends. Uh um, yeah, I, I was really high on Charlie last week. Obviously, um, made him one of my core four pieces on DraftKings, uh, and he made the cut for us. But, but like you said, disappointed again over the weekend. But he kind of fits into that mold. You mentioned Brian Harmon, who I feel like pops pops up as a as a very noticeable value on this slate with how he's been playing. Um, you can argue he's right there with Strillman and Casey, kind of when it comes to course history and recent form. Um, has a couple of top eight finishes here over the last three years. So I really love Brown Harmon there at 88 and, and Hoffman at 86. You can pop both those guys in that kind of boring veteran vanilla, uh, type of player, uh, that, that I'm actually looking for this week. Uh, and then Siwoo there at 85, man. Uh, if there's such a thing as a Pete Dye specialist, we'd have to say, uh, Siwoo certainly is one. Uh, he's one of the players, won the Amex earlier this year on a peak die track. We saw him losing the playoff at Harbor Town a few years ago. Um, had a T11 on this golf course last year. So, you know, Siwoo loves some peak die. So, uh, you know, the, there's another option in the 8,500 range with Siwoo. Yeah, um, you know, I've never been much of a Siwoo player. I hear you talk about him all the time. Um, uh, but he's not, uh, he, not for the faint of heart. <laughs> oh, no, I mean it's like it's literally like top ten or or missed or 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 sixtieth or missed the cut, you know. Uh, yeah, which is something you know, uh, something from in in one train of thought that you don't mind in GPPs. You know, if, if you're playing a big, huge, uh, you know, GPP, it's got fifty to hundred thousand people in it. Um, there's something to be said for these guys that you know, yeah, they might miss the cut, but they also bring some some top five up top five upside to the table, uh, which is something I feel you can say about Siwoo. Right. And I wouldn't mind, um, if, if, if I was looking at the Hoffman Siwoo price range and, you know, obviously a big pass on Justin Rose, but the three guys right below Justin Henley, English Leishman, wouldn't mind taking a look at them, um, uh, over the Hoffman Siwoo. If you're needing to save some money on that, on that price range player, um, this golf course sets up for all of them. Really uh, Leishman, former winner here, Henley, we've always known that, Pete Dye tracks. He seems he's a ball striker. Uh, disappointing Sunday on him, obviously. Um, doesn't hit the ball very far. We talked about that after his round Sunday. That that was a little bit of a disadvantage. And and um, an and English man come out of nowhere, third place finish. So uh, um, <clears throat> we've kind of, we've been we're Everything still waiting on English to stand up, man. I, I mean, he's got yeah. world class talent, man. Uh, uh, world class game, anyway. Um, sliding on down, uh, Higa, Higo, you know, everybody was all over him last week after you know, after his victory and and just uh, did, did not play well at the open. Uh, Keegan Bradley, this is the full Keegan tournament, isn't it? Travelers, is this is the full I think Keegan that's, that might be Valspar, Valspar, okay, maybe. Uh, but, but he yeah. still plays well here, Keegan's man. Had some, yeah, he's had some good finishes here. He had a runner up a couple of years ago, I think, when. When Chaz won, uh, he and Keegan were battling down the stretch, if I remember right. And I think he's got an additional top 10 here uh, since 2017. So this is definitely a Keegan type of track, man. Ball strikers paradise. Um, you know, get hot with a putter, which we know how horrible Keegan is, but he can occasionally get hot. Uh, and with his ball striking, you know, can make some moves and, and has that upside, kind of like we talked about with Siwoo. Um, it's not always there. Um, obviously he's a very volatile player, uh, can go from first round later to missing the cut, but you know, he, he does bring a measure of upside to the table. So, you know, I think you can look at Keegan, um, and as you get on down a lot of names, we know in the seven K's, um, not necessarily great course fits there in kind of the upper seven K's. Um, I don't know that Max home is a great fit, Phil, um, Molinari, you could maybe make an argument for, but I still can't 
can't get there, even though he played well last week. Uh, Sam Burns, uh, a, a guy we know is extremely talented, but I don't know that this is the best course fit for him. He's he's so good with his driver that this course kind of takes that out of his hands. And Doc um, had a T11 here last year, played really well at Palmetto. Uh, we'd kind of been hoping to see something out of him, and, and maybe he's trending in the right direction now, Andrew. Uh, you, you know we love Doc on this podcast. You got any thoughts on him? Uh, you know, I like, um, I like doc. He just, you don't have to get hot with the putter. I mean, and that's, uh, <clears throat> an issue, not an issue with him, but that's, that's his downfall. If there is any, um, uh, docs, what 76 or something like that, you know, a yeah, player, 76, yeah, 76. So, um, a player in that price range that I'm going to also look into and, um, GPP only here, folks, but uh, tied for eighth at the PJ Championship, tied for eleventh at the Memorial, none other than former Olympian Ricky Fowler, seventy three hundred, uh, trending in the right direction. Joe, whatever it is, it. whatever it is is going on, it's working. <clears throat> um, uh, we we you know I'm always going to throw a uh, Pete Dye, Stuart Sink is always going to be on the watch list. Uh, I'm going to be off Chris Kirk for a while. Uh, this which brings me down to your man, Grillo, the man that can never putt. Uh, um, but, yeah, I, I, I like Doc. Uh, he wouldn't be a full-on, full-blown full, blo- full blown green light, uh, you know, because consistency-wise. Uh, yep. He's a less chalk, less than chalky play, I would say. How's that? Yeah, a little, little surprised, really, to see him at 7-6, Andrew. Kind of expect mm-hmm. to see him more down towards the 7 range, uh, yeah. especially when you look at some of these guys. Uh, in the low sevens, like you mentioned, Stuart Sink has played excellent golf. Has played extremely well in this golf course in the past. Ricky Fowler, who we've talked about a little bit, and and Phil is maybe training in the right direction. This is his type of golf course. Um, hasn't played this tournament in a long time, but uh, had a couple of top fifteens the last two times he did play it years ago. And I like the fit for him on this course. Uh, it's not a not a bomb and gouge track. It's a shot maker's track, less than driver track get hot with the putter and it all spells out uh, Ricky Fowler uh, to me. So I'm with you on that. Um, and, and I would even look at a, you know, another couple of grinders, a Lanto Griffin and Ian Poulter. Um, you mentioned Chris Kirk. We, we got a lot of love for him on the pod here, but yeah, he's been hit and miss. Um, but, but I do think you can give him a look here at 73. Um, and Grio uh, has made four strike travelers cuts. Uh, is hitting the ball extremely well, leads this field and strokes gained approach over the last 24 rounds. Uh, we know he putts uh, very, very badly. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. So, But I, I, I'm interested in looking at Grio just for the ball striking, kind of a Keegan Bradley light right there uh, as a guy you could see making a run in this tournament and has played well on Pete Dye golf courses. Let's talk about the most Italian guy ever, Andrew, Guido Migliozzi. We talked about him last week. Uh, played extremely well, man. Had a top five at the U.S. Open. Um, has a win on the Euro Tour. A couple of runner-ups over there. Comes over here, man. Just continues doing his thing uh, on a huge stage. So do we jump on at 72 and try to catch lightning in a bottle here with uh, Guido? Uh, what's your, I think, what's your I think we'll, just be, we'll just be throwing, throwing dollar bills in the wind if you choose that bad, Joe. Uh, <laughs> I'm not – I mean, yeah, he played great. Don't get me wrong. Um, I just don't know enough about him, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Worth a stab, though, in the GPP. Not sure this is the best course fit for him, like you said already. Um, we well, you know, once we get really past 72 or get to 72, other than the past player history of, say, a Brendan Steele, um, uh, you know, I like, I like Maverick, um, McNeely, uh, even though his recent, recent, recent form hasn't been great. Really hadn't played that much uh, since April, Joe. Play, or you know, played three events in May. Maybe it has to do possibly with his where he lines up on the, you know, with his status or whatever. But mm-hmm. uh, hasn't played great. Did play pretty, you know. These, but these style, look, top four of the twentieth. I mean, tied fourth at Heritage, tied twentieth at Schwab. Both of the golf courses match up at this one, so I like a Maverick McNeely, seventy two. Uh, Brandon Steele, of course, history. Um, after that, Joe, he gets really thin, really fast for me. Um, yeah, was, um, you, you start running in these guys that are hit or miss, uh, maybe some guys with upside, but but also, you know, a lot of volatility there. And you mentioned, I, I like to call him Maverick Manili. I've, I've seen a couple guys um, 
sorry, I can't remember to uh, kind of give them credit, but I've seen a couple of places this week that there's some pretty heavy crossover between Pebble Beach and here. And we saw Maverick and Neely play really well at Pebble. Um, and we, we seen him play well at the Heritage, which is a Pete Dye track at Harbortown. So really like the Maverick McNeely call. Mackenzie Hughes had a T3 here last year. He's made four straight cuts in this golf tournament. Uh, coming off a, a deep run at the U.S. Open last week. So maybe, you know, he's not been in great form this year, but maybe he can carry some momentum over um, to this golf course where he's played well in the past. Uh, and then you get down, at, like you mentioned, Andrew, it starts getting a little bit thin. Kyle Stanley. Uh, as always, a uh, hashtag gross play of the week, uh, Charlie, but uh, has made four straight cuts with the Travelers and has played really good golf. Um, didn't play last week, didn't play at Palmetto, uh, but I think you can give Kyle Stanley a look there at 7K, kind of closing out that range. Not a bad play at all. A guy that I won't mind getting some exposure to in GPPs. Yeah, get uh, get down to six, 69 lower, Joe. <clears throat> you know, Richie Winsky can get hot with a putter. Uh, Matt Nay Smith, we, we we throw his name out quite a bit down here in this in this range uh, against this type of field. Uh, we love Patrick Rogers, but maybe not on this golf course. Um, you know, we like Scotty Stallings, but he hasn't been playing that great. Uh, recent form has not been too good. Ryan Moore, just we haven't seen enough golf out of Ryan Moore, Joe. Um, yeah, Patrick, I, I have no idea what what what's ever up with Ryan Moore. Yeah, I'll, nobody does. I, um, you know, an interesting play for me down here. Uh, if he gets uh gets decent, if he gets hot off the tee, this type of track, he can literally finish second on you. Never see it coming. That's Vaughn Taylor, the vet. Um, but I'm not I'm not interested in him at all. I'm just throwing that name out there. Sabatini can get plays uh plays Pete Dye tracks pretty decently over the years. Um, uh, my question for you, Joe, we get down here in the nitty gritty range, low six Ks. What about um, – why is Vincent Whaley 6,400 this week? Man, there's some <clears throat> there's some crazy stuff that seems to go on Vincent Whaley every week. Um, we've seen him repeatedly underpriced. Uh, and then Palmetto, everybody was on him, and he had one of his highest – maybe his highest price tag of the year, Andrew. He was up in the mid-sevens, I think, uh, at the Palmetto. Everyone was on him. Uh, kind of made me want to get off. And, of course, he missed the cut. So, uh, I think this is a spot to jump back on, man. He is coming off that missed cut at Palmetto. Uh, probably left a kind of a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths there. But I think at 6,400, man, we got a guy that's been a consistent cut maker throughout 2021. Uh, so, don't mind a bit jumping on Vincent Whaley. A couple other guys I like down here. Uh, I don't think the 6Ks are uh, a totally – ugly range this week uh i'll throw out hank lebiota there at 6700 um has been consistently making cuts and has made the cut in both of his previous traveler starts um playing really well with the irons feels like he's underpriced there at 6700 i'll i'll have some hank lebiota in gpps uh you mentioned vaughn taylor i think that's a guy you can look at it's got a fourth on his resume here um and you also mentioned whaley who i don't mind going to a couple of young guys uh, you know, we always like to throw those guys out. Austin Ekro uh, is turning pro, um, has played some good golf on the Corn Ferry Tour. So I think you can give him a look at 6,600. Played really well there. Um, young man out of the Oklahoma State, a uh, really talented kid. Roger Sloan's a guy we've seen pop up from time to time. Got Johnny Pock down there, didn't play well in his pro debut at Palmetto. Uh, Davis Thompson did out of the University of Georgia. He's also turn professional now so i think you can look at him down there um then you start getting into kind of some hit and miss uh hit and miss range down here at the very very bottom uh we've actually seen chase kepka play well a couple times but it seems like his form's kind of falling off uh on the kft looking at his last few results there and and i don't know that i'll go any farther down past vincent whaley um other than just grabbing some exposure to these young guys in spots yeah, I agree, Joe. Uh, like we said, you know, past seven, it starts getting pretty slippery because uh, we got to rely on putting a lot. So, uh, real question re here, ending up the show, Joe, we got to end on the on the usual note. Uh, where's your heart at, and uh, where are you throwing your darts? Man, I always wonder to myself, why do I never uh, think about this before <laughs> before we record the show? It's like when you ask me that, it's the first time I start thinking about it. Uh, 
I might be stealing your answer here, AP, but I'm going my dart. Ricky Fowler. Let's get a little, let's get a little comeback special going. I like it. I like where his game's headed. So I'm going Ricky. Uh, my heart, man, is, uh, I hate to say it, man. Paul Casey. Paul Casey. Chalk Casey. I like Brian Harmon as well, too. Uh, good price on Brian Harmon. <laughs> I like it. Chalk Casey. Yeah. Chalk scary. Casey. Scarier than a cock gun. I, I, I tell you, he's he, in my opinion, he should be chalk. Probably won't be, but uh, my dart is easily uh, Stewart Sink is going to finish in the top ten this week. Uh, basically, finishes top fifty in every event, no matter what the field is. Uh, does not miss cuts. It seems like he seems like. I mean, last ten months has played like the best golf. I mean, he's playing like he's twenty seven again, Joe. Uh, yeah. Like he's the like he's got two kids at a dorm and he's the team captain at Georgia Tech again. You know. <laughs> Uh, right. that, that's I, I won't throw that as a dart, even though I'm not saying he's going to win, but I, I just see a top 10, this field, this golf course. I mean, I know there's a lot more talent to players above him, but if you lined up, the, there would be guys that you would match him up against with a price point much higher than him that you would take him straight up over on this course. So that's where I'm at on him. Man, I, I'll tell you what, my heart this week, uh, I want to say Casey, uh, but I'm going to shed away just because of the full-blown chalk, chalk Casey move. Uh, Patrick Cantlay, um, I like him over the other guys at the top. So that's my heart. Patrick Cantlay, Stuart Sink, pretty easy for me. <laughs> Two guys I like to say a lot, so that's pretty easy. Nothing, nothing fancy this week. Nothing yeah. fancy. A little, little U.S. Open. Well, U.S. Open follow up. This is a good field, though, man. Uh, you know, I I know this tournament's been around forever and usually has a pretty good turnout, but really surprised by just just how good this field really is. So it should hopefully be a fun one. I agree, Joe. Can't what uh, you know if I get a chance to watch it, I can't wait. So uh, it's always you know TBC here is always, it's always a good good track. One of you know most Pete Dye courses are pretty fun tournaments to watch. To be honest with you, week in week out. So without further ado, my name's Andrew Putters. That's Joe Nicely. Thank you, Rotoballer.com, for everything you do. Let's go hit up the Travelers this week. Go this like, is. go subscribe, subscribe to the YouTube channel, rate our podcast, do all that stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, do all that good stuff. Help us out. Give us a like, follow, retweet, share, do all those good things. Uh, and I'll tell you what, man, hit us up on the weekend on Twitter. We're out there in the Twitterverse. We'll, we'll answer. We'll talk back. Uh, but, uh, guys, thanks for listening. This is the turn fancy golf podcast. Give it one good try. That was my first big mistake. I've already hit.